we have a constant electric field. We're going to start at point A. We're going to end at point B. So we have going from here to B. We are going to, let's see, define this distance as S. The distance from A to B is S. We're going to define a further point C, which is right here. The distance from A to C I'm going to label as X. The distance between C and B I'm going to label as D. Uh, let's see. Please notice that. Uh, okay. So the electric potential difference between A and B is equal to the negative of the integral between A and B of E dot dS. Because we're in a constant electric field, the electric field can come out. And we get negative E times the integral of cosine of theta dS. Well, cosine of theta, that angle is going to be the angle between dS, dS being this direction, and the electric field. So that angle is going to be this angle right here. Which I think you will agree is also this angle right there. Considering that those are the same angles, we know that the cosine of theta is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse, or d over s. So we have then d and s are both constants. So we have the negative e times d over s of the integral from a to b of ds. What is the integral from a to b with respect to S. Zach? Um, it's actually not D. It's okay. The integral from A to B with respect to S. Mr. P? Is it S? It's going to be li the linear distance from A to B, which we have defined as S. So this ends up being equal to negative E D divided by S multiplied by S, or negative E which hopefully looks familiar. So notice that the electric potential difference from A to B is the same as the electric potential difference from C to B. Right? Because we already we went through with the last one to figure out if we go in the direction of the electric field, we get negative ED. Well, it's also equal to negative ED if we go from point A to point B. All right, so what about the electric potential difference from A to C? This is going to be the negative of the integral from A to C of E dot dx. OK, well, again, we know that uh, the electric field is constant. So we have negative E from A to C dot dx. <coughs> We have the dot product, so we can put in the cosine of theta. What is the angle now? 90 degrees. Cosine of 90 class is? Zero. The electric potential difference from A to C is equal to zero. A and C are at something on something called an equipotential surface, or an equipotential line in this particular case, because, wow, I'll just make the board dirtier here. Uh, A and C are on an equipotential surface or if you prefer a line, if you're talking about a single as opposed to a two-dimensional object. 
So because the difference between point A and point C as far as our electric potential is the same. So if we come back to our gravitational analogy. Again, we have a constant electric field. Well, let's talk about a constant gravitational field. Right now, as long as the height is the same, the gravitational potential energy is the same, right? Well, that's basically what we're saying right here. As long as this charge stays at the same location along here, which is along an equipotential surface, it's going to maintain the same electrical potential energy and therefore the same electric potential difference. And how much work does it take for me to walk with this at the same height at a constant velocity class? Zero. Zero. Right. So the work done on an electric charge when moving along an electric potential surface, equipotential surface is class? Zero. Zero. It takes zero work to move a charged particle along an equipotential surface. One other thing to realize about equipotential surfaces and equipotential lines is that they are always perpendicular to the electric field. 